Hey guys, it's Neon Nezzy, back again with another Destiny 6 video. Today we have the sound of the game on in the background. Let me guys know if you guys like this change. Um, just, you know, some sound is better than none, right? So let me know. Today we're going to be going through a bunch of things which I think people should be doing. It's kind of like kind of like daily chores, or just chores in general that people should be doing, whether you're early, mid, or late game. It also applies to whether you're pay to win or free to play. I'm pretty sure a lot of people that have been playing the game know about this. It's kind of just like a checklist that I'm trying to provide to you guys to just go through and uh, just do it because it really does enhance your... It really does enhance um, what you can get back from, from the game. There's no other way to, to say this. So first of all, um, log in. Log in every day, you guys will get 200 rubies right off the bat. Then we have the daily quests, which are, um, which have been reduced, or the requirements for that have been reduced. For example, this one over here, um, this used to be clear the Tower of Promises three times. This used to be, uh, I think participate in commoner, commoner arena like five times or something. We had, uh, normal dungeon do this like five times, enhanced dungeon, do this five times, giants, you have to do it three times, now you just do each and every one of these things just once, and you're basically good to go, except for friends, for friends list, you just send uh, ten friends social points every day, but do all this, you get 300 rubies, so that's 500 rubies in total, and then, last but not least, go to the faction boss, and do this, it really doesn't matter um, how you guys do it, that, that's a bug right there, but once you guys do it at least once, you guys are going to be able to do re receive all of this. So this is uh, in total, it's going to be 20 dragon tokens, 30,000 gold. That's not the big point here. The big point is that you guys get two of these uh, crests, these epic legendary summoning scrolls, as well as 200 rubies. So that's just 700 in a day for doing uh, things that you're already benefiting from. So then let's move on to uh, Krosik because this is where I feel people could be very efficient. So what I would recommend is do the Imperial Grimlock once and do the Imperial Death Henge twice. So actually use 100 rubies to reset it because then you're going to be able to farm six of these with the Destro tokens. That's eight crests per day. And I want you guys to do this one uh, more than the Imperial Grimlock because here is where you get Grid Crests, which reduce your cooldowns, which are so very important in the game. Uh, I think Grid Crests are overall just the default crest that you can go with any unit out there. It's just, I don't know what to do for um, for my Adonis. Should I have him with, uh, or like with my Kurt, let's say. Should I have him with Precision or with Resistance or with LP, like Resistance or Grid? Well, just go with Grid on every unit and it's going to be fine. That is the default crest you guys have. Second, Enhanced Dungeon. If you guys are already doing Nightmare, I would suggest just farm the highest one that you guys can do once. If you guys cannot do Nightmare yet and you guys are just doing Hell, just do it once. Just, um, just do it all five times. The reason why I don't want people that are doing Nightmare to do this is because you automatically get... Um, <clears throat> you automatically get a three-star uh, Ragoon which is what you get from Nightmare Mode. I have probably right now about 150 of these in my storage. Maybe not 150, maybe like 110-ish in my, in my uh, inventory. They are all from farming Nightmare. But if you guys are doing Hell, you guys are only going to be getting 2-star and 3-star Ragoons, which in which case you would want to do this at the highest stage possible. Even people that are um, early game could, pro could possibly do the Nightmare stage, which is the highest stage, because these guys are really, really easy to take care of. Then, moving on to the Daily Dungeon, I would suggest you guys do... You guys spend a hundred rubies over here. So, so far, I've asked you guys to spend uh, 200 rubies. 100 rubies here in the Imperial Death Henge, and the other hundred over here. Do the... I just did the Stalwart Titan once. So I did this five times, and now I'm going to use this reset, and then I'm going to do the Primal Titan five times. The reason being is because when you guys look over here, or on any unit, you guys might need to use uh, for, let's say, Paper Curve. You're going to need the Paper Materials. 
And for John Rock John, you're gonna need the rock materials. For Scissor Elki, you guys are gonna need the scissor materials. However, all three of those units are going to require you guys to have these, um, I don't know what you call it, these basic awakening materials. Which is exactly why I would suggest you guys do this twice a day. Get your basic uh, once, five times, and then get whichever one is on the daily thing. Sometimes uh, it, it falls a pattern. It's like one day uh, paper, one day scissor, one day rock. So do those all once. So, so far you guys are earning 700 rubies a day just by doing uh, stuff that you already get rewards for. And then I just ask you guys to spend 200 rubies, one in the Imperial Giants and one in the Daily Dungeon. Now I know I'm repeating this a lot, but again, like I said in my previous video, I repeat things but I want people to remember it. It's like, oh shit, Nezi said this twice. This has got to be important and I swear to God, it is. Descended Dungeons over here, people don't really follow this a lot. I would say go ahead and do it. The first day that you guys do this, you guys are going to have no choice but to do the hard mode. There are going to be two stages here, guys. I've already done it, so sadly I can't show you guys, but there's going to be two stages here. Hard and Hell. The first day, you do the hard mode, otherwise you cannot move up to the Hell mode. Do the hard mode, you guys will get five fragments. After that, every day in Hell mode, you guys are going to be getting eight fragments. Eight times six is um, 48 I think so right 8 times 6 is yeah yeah it's 48 and then plus 5 that's 53 you guys need 50 fragments to summon these things so this is basically this takes like less than less than a minute every day for me with my team at most it might take you guys two minutes right let's say it takes you guys two minutes per day over the course of the week that's about 14 minutes let's say 15 minutes for 15 minutes every day, you get, or an entire week, you guys are going to be able to farm two natural four-star fodder units, either for yourself or for your codex, so that you guys can just uh, awaken them and earn codex rewards. Uh, one last thing I want to mention here is that I would suggest you guys go ahead and do the highest stage possible. All right, do the highest stage possible. At which point you guys are going to be getting a lot of um, a lot of the improved ones. You guys are going to be getting this one the most. Uh, th this one's going to be rare, and this one's going to be the rarest. Up in the up in the um, up in the higher leagues, you're not going to be getting any of these basic ones. However, I would suggest get the I don't know how to say it. Get the bigger ones and then dismantle them. All right, it's a lot more efficient if you guys get the bigger ones like superior dismantle into excellent excellent into improve and then improve into basic rather, rather than for you guys to farm really really small ones and then combine them because that's just that's very very inefficient all right what else friends guys we have friends and guess what once you guys send social points to friends you guys can stack it up and be able to purchase adventure keys 10 of them for 150 now I know it doesn't seem a lot but let's count right here okay right now I have 1209 keys let me go ahead and just do this really quick all right this is taking a while I did not expect it to take a while but basically we already have um, About 200 keys that we just got right now. So that in total was about 330 keys that I got, guys. That is pretty darn good. You don't get 5,000 social points in a day, but over the course of like a week or two, or maybe, yeah, like two or three weeks, you guys get about 5,000 social points, at which point you guys can just trade in basically for free or adventure keys. Then let's go on to the friends list, which is friends list. What I want you guys to do here is like every two or three days, first of all, send points, right? Other than that, do this by login and go to the bottom right here um, only reason I haven't uh, deleted Lulu TV is because he used to be a part of the guild and 
Although I think I think he left, but basically what I do is I go down to the people that aren't active, because if they're active, they're gonna be sending you a social point. If they're not active, you're missing on potential social points. And in the course, like over the course of a long period of time, that really, really bites, guys. It really, really hurts. As you guys notice, I always have my friends at 29. You guys can go 30 over 30, but I go 29 over 30 simply because I'm always just um, under the anticipation that I might have to add someone, which is why I always keep one slot free. But it's completely up to you guys, okay? You guys do not have to do that. Then, let's go over to the guilds. For the guild, I would suggest you guys check in every single day, um, and then whatever... Then, if you guys are not the guild uh, leader or the guild vice, you guys can really do a lot of things. Uh, make sure that you guys are checking in over here, buying your skill dragoons that are once a week. And then, also re remember to do conquest. It gives you guys a lot of rewards at the very end. Just contribute to the guild. Rewards are pretty... They're not, they're not terrible. They could be better. And I hope that um, they are better in the future, but for now, they're decent with 100,000 gold and a lot of fragments that you guys can get. Also, Destiny Void, uh, we are still recruiting. We're, we're not a, we're, we're a decent guild. Oh, good lord, I can't click today. Level 10, let's go. Destiny Void, we are still recruiting. Um, I'm gonna take a quick side note over here, okay? This guy right here, um, G. G Dragon, he joined us, and I just want to say that I'm not only letting uh, top tier people into the guild. The reason why I let G Dragon into the guild, he likes rice. He must be Asian. <laughs> he has to be Asian. <laughs> There's no other explanation. He has to be Asian. He likes rice. It's Asian for sure. But the reason why I let him into the guild is let's just look at his units here, okay? He has 4-star orbs and 3-star orbs, um, but he's only level 46, so he's having trouble farming Nightmare Mode, which is fine. I know that he's, he's going to grow. He has titles. The main thing that I'm looking for people here is that good orbs as well as good crests. As you guys can see, he has some pretty darn good crests over here. Now, Tyler doesn't really need HP, and he doesn't really need a defense. These are just here for the substats. Over here again, on his Adonis. He has uh, defense and defense, which matters. This one could be a little bit better. And then he has this uh, cooldown reduction of a total of 24. So it's clear to me that this guy has been farming uh, giants, as well as he's already, he might not be in Nightmare yet, but he's getting there. So this is what I'm looking for into people, people with a promise to grow or people that have already grown. One of the people that I led into the guild was Punk9. He's like level 62, I think. He's already pretty, pretty far in the game. So I'm not trying to be, I'm, I definitely do let people into the guild that have, that are like lower than level 50. But you guys also have to be able to show me the uh, potential that your account carries. Going back into this, let's get into arena over here. I would suggest you guys do 15 common arena swords every single day. I gave the calculations for this out in my other video. If you guys haven't watched that, go ahead and check that out. Right here, if you guys just do it 15 times a day and you guys have like a win streak of like 90% 90, 90 over and you guys are probably going to have to just buy the arena keys once for 30, then I think everybody can end up at Masters. Where is Masters? Everybody can end up at Masters 1, which is 1550 rubies. And then with the... Even if you guys are over here at 1,000 to 500, you guys will be basically getting 22,500 uh, 22, rubies every week. If you guys make a purchase of once of 100 rubies for 30 arena keys, that will be a 2,150 profit, which is still pretty good, right? You guys are basically getting 21,500 or 2,150 for basically just doing arena whenever you guys can. In the special arena, I would just suggest you guys and just go and enter them at least once. At least enter them, because then you guys do have this weekly ranking where even if you are like pretty really um, below around this area, you guys will still be getting 350 uh, rubies. So that's still pretty nice. 
Then let's go over to... I talked about that, I talked about that, I talked about that. Summons. Let's go over to summons, guys. If you guys go into summons, I feel a lot of people are blind to this part in summons. But I would suggest people do this right over here. This evolution material summoning. Go ahead and do this. These are nothing but just fodder that you guys can use to awaken and, um, what else? No, you can use to awaken, just to evolve your units. It's so much more easier to do this than to just be summoning. Like, you guys want to use your 3,500 uh, rubies when you guys have a certain banner available to you guys. Do not use, uh, don't use, like, this 3,500 summon for these uh, materials that you guys can get so easily. You guys can get two of these um, evolution materials every single day just by doing daily quests. And you guys can get it from a bunch of other quests from achievements as well. And we should be doing a summoning video uh, within like the next week or so. It depends on the banner. It depends on the banner. Um, once you guys have summoned your units, go into your uh, hero. Oh wow. I, I really need to I really need to clear a few things. But as you guys can see over here, I have a bunch of these natural four stars that I just have awakened, right? They're all awakened, and I fed a few to, to make space. And if you guys go back to a few of my previous videos, I have had this, this exclamation mark on my codex the entire time, but I was just not collecting my rubies simply because I wanted to show, you, show this to you guys on video. I basically went around and I collected a a bunch of uh, different uh, units. All these units over here, they were either uh, four star, four star awakened, or evolved into five stars for fodder. And let's just go ahead and claim all. I don't know how much we're gonna get. I'm hoping at least two thousand rubies. Seven thousand five hundred twenty rubies. Ooh! That's OP. Oh my god, yeah, you guys see? You guys see this? Hey, you guys see this? Remember that uh, video where I said Codex, you guys can get like 63,000 rubies? It was not a lie. I, I just wanted 2,000 rubies. Holy cow, this is awesome. Woo! Alright, so do that. Do that. 18,000. I have like 10,000 rubies. I have 18,000. Oh, feels good. Feels so good. Okay, um... Also, do your Tower of Promises every day, three times, three when you guys wake up, three throughout the day, and three before you guys go to bed. It really, really helps you guys collect the gold. Another thing that I would say when it comes to farming is this. So far, I've been telling everybody in Nightmare Mode to just do the boss stage, right? And that is, and that is by far the most efficient way because when I do the boss stage, my average clear time is about a hundred, uh, not a hundred, a minute and 10 seconds. That's like my average clear time. But here's the thing, when I've been doing this, you guys get slot one, two, three, and four orbs. My, uh, my luck with the slot one orbs, the one with the HP orbs have been absolute shit because this is Silvus. This is the HP orb. And all I've been getting is flat stat HP on slot one. So, I have basically been farming this boss stage for the past, I don't know, week, I think, because of the faction, because of this, uh, because of the faction, it doubles the, I don't know what it's called, it's the faction buff or something? It doubles your gold, it gives you guys 50% more experience. So I have pretty good orbs on slots 1, 3, and 4, but my slot 1 is pretty darn bad, so what I did this morning was I went ahead, I three-starred this thing right here, and now I am going to get into this run, and basically I'm just going to be autoing this whole... Oh my god. But you guys get my point, right? The reason why I'm doing this is because I have good orbs on everything else. I would just suggest do the boss stage as many times as you guys want. After you guys get like decent orbs, look at which slots you guys are lacking, and then go ahead and do these um, these stages. I'm not gonna lie, they do take more time, but the difficulty level is significantly lower. It is significantly lower. 
Um, average clear time for me on these stages is about 1 minute and 40 seconds. On this stage, it's a 1 minute and 40 seconds. Over here, it's like a minute, it, basically a minute on average. So, every time I farm one of these, uh, one of these, any of these stages over here, if I do three of these, I could be farming four of these. Now, that's only one difference, right? But let's say I farmed 300 of these, I could have farmed 400 of these. But also at the same time, over here, I haven't died once. It's so much safer, it's so much easier as well than the boss stage, because in the boss stage, the main reason that you guys get killed is because one is the crowd control and second is the damage because it is the boss stage so there are like multiple mini bosses coming at you at once and then the bosses on the boss stage are also obviously a lot more tougher so i hope you guys have found this uh video useful i am now going to go into the storage and i am going to well you know what no, actually, I was gonna, I was just gonna say, uh, start like throwing away, uh, start, um, start selling your three-star orbs and crests that you guys don't need. But obviously, you guys already know that. So I hope you guys uh, enjoyed this video. If you guys did, please go ahead and leave a like. If you guys have any questions in the video, anything at all, please go ahead and comment last video i was giving out people advice on nightmare mode a lot of people took me up on the offer and they even wrote like freaking essays about what units they had and what builds they had and i um being the uh dumb person but at the same time loving loving and dumb person that i am gave them an essay back telling them what to do different variation they they can do and i'll still do it for anybody else that wants help on building their team and it doesn't just have to be for nightmare any stage in the game that you guys have a problem with let me know in the comments and down below my only request is please use the hashtag nezi it, it's so much more easier for me to find what are questions and what are just like general comments so anyway hope you guys enjoyed this video um Hope you guys are enjoying Destiny 6. We should have a global server release pretty soon, and we should be getting another like update patch uh, in like the next week or two. So, if you guys like my videos, please go ahead and subscribe to my channel. It helps keep me motivated. And until the next time, guys, Neon out.